Off the coast of Port Sudan, Special Forces on board the USS Lewis Puller are ready to take off at any moment's notice. Simultaneously, 500 miles away, three Chinooks are low flying over the Ethiopian Sudanese border. The destination? Khartoum, the capital of South Sudan. On board, SEAL teams are ready to evacuate the US Embassy personnel in wake of a coup that has plunged the city into a battlefield. Amidst these events, the USS Puller stands by, akin to a floating base, ready to offer a contingency plan. But serving as a maritime base is just one of its many roles. Beyond being a sea base, the USS Puller was designed from the start to address a major gap in America's possible future war, the logistics of a conflict in the Pacific Ocean. A conflict in the Pacific means a significant reorganization of the U.S. forces logistics. Logistics can be considered the grammar of war, as it determines the hows, whens, and whats of any military operation. The further the military force needs to be projected, the more complex and lengthy the logistics become. During the Cold War, the United States anticipated a confrontation with its primary strategic adversary, the Soviet Union. The vast and flat northern European plains, which span an area roughly half the size of the contiguous United States, were considered the primary theater of operations. To support such a conflict, the U.S. military established a network of highway-connected bases stretching from Italy to Germany. This served as the intra-theater logistical backbone of its war-fighting capability against the Soviet Union. However, the Pacific Ocean's vast expanse, roughly one-third of Earth's surface, has replaced the green forests of Central Europe. South Korea has taken the place of West Germany. Taiwan is the new Kaliningrad, and the Malacca Strait has replaced the Fulda Gap. Yet, the Pacific is so vast, and America's bases are so far apart from each other and from potential conflict hotspots. Currently, the U.S. maintains three major types of bases in the Pacific, based on their distance from major conflict areas. Firstly, there are bases in allied countries like Japan, South Korea, and the Philippines. Secondly, bases on U.S. islands, like Hawaii and Guam. And lastly, bases on U.S. mainland. This tyranny of distance dictates that the intermediate nodes become vital in projecting and sustaining U.S. power distributed over such a wide theater. This raises a major question. How does one establish multiple logistical and command and control hubs in the middle of the ocean. The U.S. Navy's answer is the ESB. ESB stands for Expeditionary Sea Bases. They differ from traditional warships designed for combat or supply roles. Instead, ESBs are similar to aircraft carriers or amphibious vessels, with a focus on logistics and versatility. To put it simply, if an aircraft carrier is like an airbase at sea, while an amphibious vessel is like a port in the sea, the ESB can be thought of as a flight decked garage at sea. And that's literally how the ship came to be. The Navy took an off-the-shelf Alaska-class tanker, removed the middle section, built a parking garage, and added a flight deck. The ESB has four main capabilities. Aviation facilities, mission deck, command and control assets, and ample crew and supplies room. The most notable feature of the ESBs is their football field size flight deck, which is the third largest in the U.S. Navy inventory, following the aircraft carriers and the LHAs. The flight deck has the capability to accommodate a wide range of U.S. military helicopters, from the smaller AH-1 to the larger MV-22 and Chinook. 
This versatility proves invaluable for operations that don't require a high-value asset, like an aircraft carrier or an amphibious landing dock. But it's not just helicopters that can utilize this flight deck. It also enables the launch, operation, and recovery of various light UAVs, such as the Scan Eagle or the Textron Aerosond UAS. The ample space on board allows for the potential operation of swarms of these systems, not only for launching and recovery, but also for processing information. This enhances the ship's potential role, as C2 nodes, capable of obtaining extensive situational awareness. One key feature of this ship class is its extensive command and control capabilities. The ship boasts over 2 megawatts of surplus energy and offers plenty of space for information fusion with up to 40 desks and classified information handling capabilities. Not only can the ESB store and process large quantities of information, but it also has the ability of making this information private and not accessible to others. Just like modern military forces, internet users also face the need to share sensitive data and information privately. Today's sponsor, Surfshark, is a VPN that provides a powerful solution for securing your online data while browsing the internet. With Surfshark's mobile and desktop apps, you can protect your personal information even when you are connected to a public Wi-Fi network, such as at a cafe. Moreover, Surfshark offers the ability to change your virtual location to over a hundred different countries. Personally, I use this service to access YouTube content from different countries, like checking the latest trends and news on the Taiwanese and South Korean YouTube. If you're interested in expanding your YouTube horizons or safeguarding your online privacy, check out Surfshark through the Kamome link, where, if you use promo code Kamome, you can get up to six months free. If you're still unsure about the benefits, Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee. So make sure to give Surfshark a try. And now, let's get back to the ESB. Below deck, the spacious area facilitates the installation of containerized mission equipment, as well as the handling of rigid hull inflatable boats and a range of unmanned vehicles. It also provides ample storage for supplies and spare parts. These ships are equipped with modular command and control capabilities, making them valuable assets for maintaining situational awareness and relaying information. They can also be utilized for medivac and reinforcements when needed. However, the most crucial role these ships play is their function as logistical nodes. Engineers estimate that ESBs have the potential to store more than 11 million gallons of cargo fuel. To put it into perspective, LHA 6 and 7 carry approximately 1 million gallons of cargo fuel, while other large decks carry about 600,000 gallons. Additionally, these tanks can be utilized for water purified by the ESB's onboard desalination systems. In a recent exercise in the Philippines simulating a combat scenario, the average water consumption per marine, including hydration, showers, laundry, hygiene, and the chow hall, was about 20 gallons. Considering the total water consumption for a battalion of 1,000 units, the daily consumption rises to 20,000 gallons. During World War II, the strategic tactic of cutting off supply lines played a crucial role in weakening Japanese forces. The United States successfully employed a method known as island hopping, which involved bypassing heavily fortified islands and instead targeting less defended islands and Japanese supply lines. This approach allowed the U.S. to minimize troop losses while gradually wearing down the entrenched Japanese forces. The success of this strategy was made possible by a massive logistical effort to resupply troops stationed on small distant islands, submarines and seaplane tenders were utilized. Similarly, the expeditionary sea base serves as a vital logistical hub. It not only allows for the storage of substantial supplies, 
but also enables the safe transportation of these provisions directly to ground troops. Additionally, the ESB provides maintenance capabilities for helicopters and light drones, further enhancing its importance in supporting military operations. In future conflicts in the Pacific Ocean, the reliance on helicopter and tilt rotor airborne transportation of supplies will be paramount. This is primarily due to the vast distances involved and the lack of sufficient land infrastructure. The Pacific Ocean's immense size dictates the rules of power projection and the ability to rapidly supply spares, fuel, ammunition, water, and food is crucial for swift deployment. Moreover, the vulnerability of land ports and airports to precision bombing make the capability to deliver supplies without extensive infrastructure a necessity, which helicopters excel at. The logistical challenges faced in deploying helicopters and VTOL jets during the Falklands War mirror those that would be encountered in U.S. operations in the Pacific. The Royal Navy's use of auxiliary vessels like the Atlantic Conveyor and the Atlantic Causeway played a crucial role in sustaining the logistics of UK forces during the Falklands War. These vessels transported vertical takeoff and landing Harriers, helicopters such as the Chinook and the Sea King, as well as their fuel, spare parts, and even ammunition. Throughout the 10 weeks of conflict, the Atlantic Causeway facilitated approximately 4,000 landings and refueled over 500 aircraft. These operations were vital for medevac missions, particularly during the attacks on RFA Sir Galahad and Sir Tristram. Just as the UK faced significant logistical challenges during the Falklands War, any US intervention in the Pacific would also require extensive logistical planning. The advantage of these ships lies in their basis on the already established Alaska class, which allows for better control over deployment and costs compared to other vessels. A San Antonio class ship costs around two billion, while an ESB is four times cheaper. The ESBs, with their capability to deploy unmanned systems, have the potential to become pivotal platforms for intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, and command and control operations. Similarly, China has also been actively exploring alternate capabilities. A previous video shed light on China's efforts to adapt civilian RORO carriers for amphibious operations, indicating that both the US and China are committed to enhancing their military capabilities. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, we invite you to explore our secret Discord and Patreon. Links in the description. We also encourage you to share your valuable feedback and tips in the comments section below. Thank you once again for your support. Ciao.